right. Well, you got your Bibles? Let's make the devil really, really nervous. Could we turn my mic up? I'd be so grateful. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have. I can have. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I can have. Says I can have. I can do. I can do. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I can do. Says I can do. And I am. And I am. What it says I am. What it says I am. For sure. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. It is truth, and we deposit it within us. Lord, we don't live on a lie. We live on truth. We hear your voice, and the voice of a stranger we do not hear. So, Holy Spirit, speak to each and every person here today that we will grow. Our roots will grow deep. Lord, our lives will produce a, a, re, a result, 30, 60, and 100-fold return on the word we sow into our heart today. We have ears to hear. We yeah. listen. We yeah. hear carefully, not casually, so we can apply it into our lives in Jesus' name. Someone said? Amen. 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 Right Amen. Well, there's definitely been a theme yes, going on. Yes, Aaron Francis since, did uh, since Devo this meeting. morning. and. It's like, what? Yeah, Christina made a statement in her in her uh, offering, and she Greg and I looked. She nearly preached our message. <laughs> Greg's sitting there. She's preaching this our message. This is close. This is Aaron's close. preaching it. Christina's preaching it. Everybody's preaching our message. <laughs> uh, but she said when she made the statement that Peter probably could have kept going even if the storm hadn't passed, it didn't look like it was supposed to look, he thought, if I get out of the boat, the storm will stop immediately. So the title of our message is, How Things Are Supposed to Be. How Things Are Supposed to Be. Have you ever been in a situation where you just, in your imagination, you're just, okay, this is how it's going to go, and it doesn't? Anybody ever had that happen? In our furnace. If you didn't raise your hand, wow, yay you. The furnace in here is only like a year and a half old, and we're just like, when you come on a Sunday morning, it's 20 degrees outside, it's supposed to be 68 degrees in here. Or That's 70. how it's supposed to be. And uh, it wasn't that way. So, When you come life. to church, the sound system is supposed to just always be miraculous. And when it's not how it's supposed to be, do you, we panic? Here's the question. Do you panic? And part of our message today is about learning. I heard, I heard this story actually this week of, of uh, somebody was on the ski patrol and the ski patrol was panicking and they were realizing they needed to teach the ski patrol, you don't panic. Because not everything is looking how it's supposed to be. That's called life in a fallen world. And so when life in a fallen world doesn't look like it's supposed to, the key is you don't panic. You run to Jesus with peace and clarity. I love how we just kept. I, I'm just curious. How many even knew that the sound system was glitching during worship? How many didn't know that it was glitching? That's the question. How many didn't know it was glitching? A couple people. That's awesome. Because you were just deciding to worship God and, and, and things were going on all around you, but you just decided, I'm going to worship God no matter what. Don't you love that? You can worship God no matter what because life is not always going to look like it's supposed to. That's right. So we are going to learn today how to respond when things don't go right uh, because there's a group of people in the Bible who responded incorrectly. And so we're going to learn a lesson how to respond properly by people who did it wrong. <laughs> how many know you can learn? You can learn. You can learn from can other learn. people's mistakes. Yep. And like, mm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what, how today's going to look. And so the children of Israel, when they left Egypt. So turn your Bibles to Exodus. We're going to the book of Exodus. Chapter 14, verses 9 through... Ten. Here we go. Verse 9. The, Egyptian, the Egyptians, who were the ones who had them in slavery, <clears throat> chased after them. Now, remember, the Egyptians ended up letting them go and letting them go with a lot of silver and gold because they were so tired of all the plagues. They were like, get out of here. Remember? But now they're, it's sinking in, and they have decided to chase them because they want their slaves back. <clears throat> So the Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, 
all his horses and chariots, his charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore. Um, I'm just going to say of the Red Sea. Those are cities that if I pronounce them may, I might possibly pronounce them wrong. So um, of the Red Sea, verse 10, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and what? Panicked. Panicked. When they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they cried out to the Lord. So a few minutes before this panic moment, the Egyptians were laughing. They were loving it. Moses had told them they were going to go to a promised land. Uh, all the plagues happened in Egypt through Moses. And so they are free. They're loaded down with goods and wealth. And they are trucking. They are laughing and just having the grand old time. And so they're just camping out along the, the Red Sea, just singing kumbaya and marshmallows and s'mores, and they're just having a grand old time. I just want to make sure you're say, you said the children of Israel, not the Egyptians. I think I might have heard you say Egyptians. But definitely the children of definitely Israel. Definitely the children of Israel. Forgive yeah. me if I yeah. said that wrong. And so all of a sudden you can just hear somebody, what's that dust cloud over there? And boom, up over the hill, here comes this army. And all of a sudden, it's not fun anymore. They're panicking. They think it's over. We're going to die. They had the faith, just like we offering talked about, for a short amount of time. They had the faith to get themselves out of Egypt. But then all of a sudden, when things didn't look like they were supposed to, all of a sudden, that faith was out the window, and they were panicking. Uh, Psalms 105, verse 37 says, he also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among the tribes. So it's easy to have faith when things look like they're supposed to. It's easy to have faith when you've got all the money you need to pay your bills. It's easy to have faith when you're feeling healthy and everything's peachy keen. But, and that's how they left Egypt. It says there was none feeble among them. They had silver. They had gold. They had all their needs provided for. Everything was hunky-dory. And that is how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be, <laughs> right? So when it was like it was supposed to be, they had great faith. But all of a sudden, when it didn't look like it was supposed to be, they panicked. They panicked. Let's uh, continue in verse 14 or chapter 14 and let's go to verse 11 still in exodus and they said to moses why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness weren't there enough graves for us in egypt what have you done to us why did you make us leave egypt you know they wanted to go but now they're like Psh. verse 12 different story now didn't we tell you this would happen there's always somebody i'm told you this would happen. Now, don't you just love hearing those words? Just love that. The, uh, didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. <laughs> Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. I mean, it, what a fun time to be a leader right there. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still. Watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never, they will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. I love this. I love just stay calm. Can we just say that? Just, just stay, stay calm. calm. Verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people, get, get moving. moving. Say that again. Get, get moving. moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so that the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. The Israelites were saying, this is not how it's supposed to be. And they had all that long list of reasons. We should have been left. We were happy eating garlic and onions and being slaves. And they weren't. But, you know, when things go wrong, you start... Your, your view of your history gets skewed. That's right. Let's bring it to a little bit uh, modern where we live. How many 
happened to use Amazon. Like that was like, yeah, everybody. like most everybody. Okay. In 1994, Amazon was actually started. Uh, he was started by Jeff uh, Bezos. It was started as a bookstore. But he had a vision for it being able to sell everything that anybody could possibly want or need instead of just books. But what he realized that in order to do that, in order to have something different, he was going to have to do something different. He was going to have to change the methods. He was going to have to change things around for him to get the results to be able to have something different. And if we're not careful in life, we can get stuck in the way we think things are supposed to be. And I'm going to give you a forewarning. The older you get in this room, the easier that statement happens. When you are young, you're more pliable and willing to change. But the older you get, I can remember hearing when I was young, I used to giggle at older people who would say, well, that's not the way they did it when I was young. I used to giggle. And people that I knew were older, they were so stuck in the way they thought things were supposed to be. And now, have things changed any? No, we're, it's just some, some people grew up. So when, it, when I'm tempted to let it come out of my mouth, I brrrr, try to reel it back in. Because that is called, life is going to change. But we get stuck with, that's not how it's supposed to be. That's not how it was when I was a kid. Are you following me? So here, even in, in, in Bible days or in today, we've got to realize, we've got to have the faith to go through life when life changes. Because I'm guaranteeing you, life is not going to even look the same 10 years from now. It's not. And if you're older and that scares you, I'm sorry. Don't get panicked. Stay calm and realize God's going to be with you in 10 years from now just as much as he is now. Just get moving. Get moving. And, you know, processes and methods change. Mm -hmm. And here we see how they thought they were going to have to go around the Red Sea and enter into their promised land. The promised land was still before them, but all of a sudden they felt threatened. And so instead of staying calm, they definitely panicked. And they were literally willing to go back to Egypt as slaves. And that's a scary that's place scary. to be, to go backwards. The Bible tells us as we live in the last days, there's people that are going to leave Christianity and go back. But it says we are not of those people who go back to, how many want to go back to your old lifestyle? I mean, dear Lord. But a lot of people in this room would want to go back to some things. So be careful what you wish for. They, they were, we look, we read this story and we make fun of them, right? Like, who wants to go back to being a slave? Are you nuts? But we do the same thing. We start glorifying the past and how amazing it was back then. We forget about all the hard times. All we want to remember is how amazing it was then. Stop it. Stop it. Realize that God has you here and now for such a time as this. And that God has you here for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Because he has things he wants you to accomplish. But if all you have your head doing is this all the time, you can't see where you're going. You know, there's a reason there's a rear view mirror that's really small compared to your windshield on your car because if all you do is look at the past you're going to crash and in life if all you do is turn around and look at how amazing this was I want this and I want that you're going to crash in life because you've got to be looking at what God has for you in the future you've got to be looking at what maybe it doesn't look like it's supposed to because that's called life but God is going to, if you stay calm and you stay in faith, you can keep, like, like Christina said, walking on water in the midst of a storm. You can stay calm in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. If you stay calm, stay connected to the Holy Spirit, he's right there with you. He wants to take you through the things that don't look like you think they're supposed to look. You know, when I woke up this morning, I just thought, my wife is so sweet, such a 
mild-mannered woman. Can I just get a high five from you? That was good preaching right there. <laughs> Mercy sakes. But when things don't go the way we planned, fear gripped them. Fear can grip us. Yes. And grumbling and griping, complaining. And and how many know that never helps no. bring answers and solution? It doesn't. It's, it's so easy to fall into. It's the natural it thing It is the do, natural. I, I'm just going to give another example. Um, you know, when, when I was going through some things with my brother in November and December, my brain even wanted to go to a pity party. But then I had to, when I got over into, maybe this doesn't look like it was supposed to, but then I started praying about things, and I started seeing answers to even my little prayers. And I say little because in my mind they were me crying out to God in my shower Asking God for the little things, God, I need this to happen today. And God answered them. I'm telling you, no matter what, God is hearing you. God is with you. God wants to take care of you, even in the midst of things that aren't maybe what you thought they should be like. You know, I, I can't count how many people have lost loved ones in the middle of the holidays. It's not how you thought it was supposed to look, but... You got it. Life happens. I was, I looked at my husband and I said, you know, I want to make sure that my calendar doesn't get so booked that when life happens, you can still handle life. Because if you think that nothing's going to happen and you book yourself so tight that there's no room for a loved one getting sick or, or somebody that needs your care, then you're too tight. You're squeaky tight. I have a tendency to do that. That is my weakness. I tend, tend to overbook myself. And I, I looked at Pastor Greg when we were having some time away, and I said, sweetheart, let's not book ourselves so much that when life happens and the unexpected and everything doesn't look like it's supposed to, we are still able to stay calm, stay in faith, and keep trucking. Does anybody else know what I'm, what I'm talking about? You know, when... God spoke to the Egyptians, and they're just like, Michael, can you help me illustrate this? Come on up here. They were, got to the place where they're excited about the vision, and so, so I don't have you to do it. I'm just going to walk towards you, and I just want you to resist me from walking forward, okay? And so they got the gold and silver, and this is God's will for me. Yeah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I, I got to keep going. And, and then there's resistance Okay, there's resistance. Maybe God changed his mind. This, I thought was God's will, but I, as I keep trying to do God's will, I keep getting resistance, so God must change his mind. I probably was, maybe God wants me to go back to Egypt, and, and he'll take care of me as a slave. Maybe that was his plan, and I just, right? Did God change his mind? He wanted them free, but a little bit of resistance, we think, he changed his mind. So I need to go change myself. Right. Thank you. You know, the Garden of Eden, God wanted to be close to mankind. And sin entered the picture. <clears throat> but God, through the Bible, you see him continually wanting to be close to mankind. You know, and then we see Jesus. He sent Jesus once again. He wanted to be close to mankind. He, he hasn't changed his mind. The methods have changed. You read the Old Testament. The methods have definitely changed. But the plan of God never changed to be close to him. God's plan for you has not changed. The methods have. The methods have changed. You know, we really wish... Okay, a little true confession time. Christmas time in our home. I watch quite a bit of Hallmark movies. <laughs> just, just, just saying. And, and so uh, sometimes we wish we served a Hallmark movie God. Because, you know, it's predictable. It's like... This, this guy comes rolling into town on his motorcycle, and he's, he's lost, you know, and, 
you know, good looking and <laughs> goes to the coffee uh, house and there's this good looking female barista serves him coffee and you see the little spark, you know, and uh, and then her delinquent boyfriend is over in the corner, you know, and you look at him and you're just like, Psh, that's going to be over and these two people are going to hook up and live happily and it it rolls out that way. And, you know, we, we wish God was a Hallmark movie kind of God because it would be predictable, right? And how many know God is just is not a Hallmark movie kind of God? He's not predictable. And it's really irritating sometimes because you think this is how it's going to go. And, it got, and I think sometimes when we got it all figured out, that's when God's like, watch this. I'm going to see how much faith y'all got, you know. <laughs> and so he just messes with us sometimes. And I think he likes it. But, you know, it keeps us... It keeps us on our toes spiritually, and that's exactly what the children of Israel, they were, they thought they were following the Hallmark movie God out of Egypt. We know how this story is going to go. It's going to be a piece of cake, slam dunk, but how many know life just isn't Hallmark movie way? And so in Isaiah 43, 19, this is the God we serve, for I'm about to do something new. And that freaks a lot of people out because we don't like the new thing. We just got accustomed to the way it's been. And now you're changing the rules? What? How many love, 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 love change? Okay, that was like 1% of you. (laughs) Yeah, change is not our favorite thing. But how many know change is healthy for you? Yep. I'm about to do something new. I've already begun. Do you not see it? You know, as, you know, it might be that you do need a a different education for something that God wants to do. It might be that you need a new perspective of understanding for the next thing down your line. It might be that um, you need a new experience. And I'm not talking about always the fun experiences. Please get me right. I'm talking about things that don't go the way you thought they were supposed to. But God's like, they need to go through this to be able to help Joe in six months from now. God will use whatever, and I'm not saying God God causes anything bad. Please don't start a doctrine that I'm not trying to say. Um, But what I am saying is God will use some things that we go through in life because we live in a fallen world. And he will use them for the good if we let him. If we stop the whining and complaining and the panicking and say, I'm going to stay calm, I'm going to let God, and I'm going to trust God, and watch and see how he will use that for his glory. Use it for his glory. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. There's a little phrase there that I think fits perfectly in this storyline, and it it works good for us as well. And it's Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind. On things above, not on things on the we earth. Could, we could stop there and just camp there for the rest of the time. Set your mind. You want to know how to get through life when things don't look like they're supposed to? You have to set your mind. You have to choose to stay calm. You have to choose. Yes, like, like the, the ski patrol that they realize they got to train people not to panic. But that basically is setting ah, the... That's you're going to die up here on the mountain. It's bad. You don't want that paramedic working you on you. You do not want the paramedic that goes, oh, my word. What on earth? I don't know if you're going to make it. No, you don't want that. You want the paramedic that's going to stay calm and go, it's okay. We got you. You're in good hands. Everything's under control. Am I right? <laughs> you're bleeding. You don't want the paramedic freaking out on you. You want him to stay calm. But God wants you to stay calm. I got to say that again because that was not enough amens. God wants you to stay calm. And you got to do that by doing what Colossians 3, 2 says. Set your mind on things above. We did this when we got married. We set our minds that we are going to go down this road together of life, no matter good times, bad times, Mm -hmm. 
broken bodies, not broken bodies, old, young. We're going to set our minds. And there's some words that we're never going to use mm -hmm. to keep our minds set. Yeah. So we determined we are set our minds mutually together. We covenanted together. This is the lane we're going to walk mm -hmm. until death do us part. Mm -hmm. And so we set our minds yeah. to have a marriage. And as we've gone along, we've had to set our minds on different things. When we started the church, we had to set our mind. And there were some phrases that we used. Come hell or high water, we're going to start this church and keep it going. Well, there was a couple times where I was like, I don't think I like that setting anymore. <laughs> but come back to Jesus. Has things changed? Nope. Okay. We keep trucking. And so there's times where we're challenged, you know, when Peter's walking on the water. Did God change his mind that he, oh, it's windy and, you know, it's tough conditions out here. Yeah, go back to the boat. That was, no. Yeah. God didn't change his mind. But Peter's mindset changed. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when we're going through stuff, we got to launch out with a mindset we are going to go to the other side. We're going to get to the promised land. I don't care if Egyptians are going to chase us. We're going to the promised land. So there's a mindset that God's got to have. And what mindset do you have? What is God speaking to you about your family life, your career, your, your finances, the promises of God that you're believing for? Has, has God changed his word and his promises? Or his promise is only good for you, but they're not good for you. Or, yeah, you can do that one, but they can't do no, we got to build our faith, and once our faith is connected to that word, we set our course, and we do not change. I call it the W's. You got to remember who you are in Christ. You got to remember why you are here, the who, why. You got to remember where you're going. You know, the Egyptians or the Israelites kind of forgot where they were headed because they panicked. You got to know what you are doing. What are, what are you doing? What has God put in your hand? Now, as they, and I jumped ahead of myself, what do you got in your hand? Because as they got to the Red Sea, that's exactly what God said of Moses. What do you got in your hand? Sometimes God is asking you that because we think we don't have anything. We think, I've got to keep, I'm, I'm still asking God for this. And God's saying, but what do you have? What have I already put in your hand? Some of us think, I don't got anything. I don't got this and that. And I'm believing for this and that. And I don't got it. But what do you have? And are you thankful for what you do have in your hand? Moses had a staff and a rod in his hand. And that was going to cause the victory for them to walk through the Red Sea. Who would have thought about that? I, I, I don't have enough brains to think that a rod is going to, boom, get them through the Red Sea. Why do I say that? Because there are some things in your hand that you have no comprehension of that that is what God is going to use. It's the furthest thing from your brain, but it's not further from God's brain. Because he's asking you, but what do you have in your hand and are you using it correctly you know sometimes we hear um when we're out sharing jesus with people that you know it's like well i, I would go to church but you know the building would fall down <laughs> or you know it just but you don't understand my life that i've lived and living but you know when faith is right there you just use that faith to believe and jump on board. God will take care of the, the details. Yeah. And yeah. it's interesting in the story, and we know how the story ends, but they didn't know the story, how it ended. They were living it. They were living it. And you all are living your own story, and sometimes we're envisioning ahead of how God's going to work it out. But here's what God's plan was, which was so much greater than their plan. Going back, that was not God's plan. God wanted to get them, God not only wanted to get them to Egypt, but he wanted to destroy their enemies in the process. So God's plan was, yo, stay calm, keep moving, 
Use what you already have. You don't got to go to a new conference and get a new thing and buy that. And No, you got everything you need to get you to your promise. So what did God do? The Red Sea opened up, and they led their problem right into the middle of the Red Sea. Isn't that interesting? And as they're going through the middle of the Red Sea, the Bible says there was a cloud of darkness on their enemy. They couldn't see where they were going. The wheels were falling off their chariots. And they, they were, the panic left the children of Israel, and the panic right. went on their enemy. Yep. Yep. See, God had a plan to take care of their enemy. Yeah. God even gave them faith because he spoke it before it happened. He said, the enemies that you see today, you're not going to see them again. And they probably thought, well, yeah, that word, you know what that word means? I'm going to die and I'm not going to see it. You know, we can, we can twist God's word into something negative. I mean, we got to stay calm and trust God knows what he's doing even when we don't know what he's doing. I got something for you to write down. You ready? Don't let the predicament replace the promise. Don't let the predicament replace the promise. When we are in the thick of life, what does God want from you? He wants your trust. There's a little song when I was a little girl called Trust and Obey. Anybody ever remember that little song? If you've lived in the church a long time, trust and obey, for there's no other way but be happy in Jesus and to trust and obey. He wants your trust, and then he wants you to obey. Moses had to stay calm and trust and obey. Thank God Moses trusted and obeyed. I mean, because throwing a rod down does not sound like what it was supposed to look like. Am I right? That is not the normal thing you would do when the, you, I mean, in my mind, I mean, they didn't have guns back then, but in my mind, he's probably like, where's our swords? What kind of, what kind of military devices do we got? That would be what my brain would think. What, what? What do we got? How many guns we got? How many swords? How many knives we got on us? What, what do we got on us? All that silver and gold. Right now, we need, we, need some, we need some action. Not a rod. A staff. That doesn't sound like it's going to do anything. I'm getting back to what has God put in your hand. God wants to use it. Not not whine and complain like, unfortunately, like the Israelites did. Thank God they had a leader who didn't panic or whine and complain. He chose to use what God had put in his hand. We got uh, through uh, Starling's brother Steve passing, got to meet some relatives we haven't seen. And, along, you know, you, you get together with your relatives at weddings and funerals, seems like. So there was this one relative we hadn't seen in, like, 30 some years and he said something that I want to share with you that is that is ties to this truth don't replace the promise with your predicament so uh, this relative I think it's your cousin is it he uh, he hadn't she hadn't seen him since he was a early teenager and so as he grew we just never saw him at family functions, weddings and funerals and all that kind of stuff. And so till Steve's passing. At Steve's passing, this guy had just a bright face on him, looked really good. Like life was really good. So we got to sit down and talk with him. Like, man, where you been? What's been going on? He goes, I've had the most horrible life. I've made some of the worst choices. I was homeless for 15 years. And I thought my life was normal. But it was only normal because of the people that I was around were making the same dumb decisions I was. So we were all normal in our predicament. But he goes, my grandmother prayed prayers for me. She used to tell me 
that I was going to live for Jesus, that I would walk in salvation, that I would make it to heaven. My grandmother never, who, who raised him his, his early years, because my grandmother never got to see me live for Jesus Christ. She goes, I just graduated a month ago from Teen Challenge, got clean, got free from all the substances, figured out how to live and how to make good, healthy choices from now going forward. But he goes, my grandmother's prayers are still working. She physically didn't get to see this day, but she saw him in her heart. And, man, I'm crying. I'm just like, man, I love you. Let's take a selfie together. <laughs> <laughs> and, but isn't that it? Sometimes we parents, grandparents, we might die, but don't just die with the predicament. Die in faith that your prayers are still alive, they're still active, they're still at work. And sometimes it's so easy, and we've heard this, oh, they're so lost, they'll never come to Jesus. What did you just do? You replace the predicament with a promise. Don't do that. Stay in faith. What do you do when the bills come and the job ends and, you know, things aren't going the way they're supposed to be? Well, God changed his mind, so did he? And when the change, things change, that's when we become vulnerable. And you can either change to trust God or you can change negatively and go back into the mess of slavery. Our job is to stay calm in God and keep moving forward. What they went through uh, did affect the future generations. And uh, thank you very much. I think many times people think they, they only affect generations if they have physical children. I want you to hear this and hear it loud and clear. People are watching you, and you are affecting the next generation, whether that is your physical child or not. Y people are watching you. And so the children of Israel, they did make it across the Red Sea, and that was talked about to the next generation. The next generation had to get up in front of the Jordan River, and how did they know they were going to make it? Because that, that was a big challenge. But how did they know they were going to make it through the Jordan River? Because they'd heard about the Red Sea. You need to be continuing to tell others the faithfulness of God in your life. Because the next generation needs it. They need to hear those stories so that when they are faced with their what's not supposed to be, they know how to get through it so that they know how to stay calm. They know how to set their mind. They know how to do it because if we don't teach them who is, who will, it is you. You are here for such a time as now. No matter if you're the youngest one in this room or the oldest, people are watching you. Your classmates are watching you. The college friends are watching you. The other young married couple is watching you. How do you get through the marriage when the, the bump happens? When the unexpected happens? When it, this isn't what marriage was supposed to look like. How do you get through? How do you get through it? I look at some of your faces and I know some of the things you've gone through. When life didn't look like it was supposed to. And you had to stay calm and you had to set your mind on things above. You had to set your mind on the Holy Spirit. And you had to choose what's in my hand right now. Would you stand? Keep fighting with the promise in mind, no matter what the circumstances look like. Amen. And we need to make up our minds. We're not going back. We're going to keep going forward. We're going to keep moving. I love the story because Moses stayed calm 
when everybody else was in chaos and whining and complaining. Moses take on God, I don't think this is what I had in mind either, but what do I do now? What do you need me to do? And God just showed him. Wasn't practical or in his, I mean, it was practical, but it was certainly the farthest thing from his mind. I just put the staff over. But here's the deal. For God to speak to us and for us to stay calm, for us to keep moving, we need somebody with us that's walking this journey with us, and his name is Jesus. Jesus, we need to stay connected so we can hear him, that our spirit is made alive and we have spiritual ears to hear and a mind that's been renewed to process and our body sanctified to go, yes, this is the direction I need to go. And that happens by receiving Jesus into our heart. And it's simple. God hasn't made it complicated. It's just inviting him in. And I'm going to count to three and on three, if you're in this place or watching online, Invite Jesus in so you can stay calm and keep moving when life isn't the way it's supposed to be. So if everyone would just bow your heads and close your eyes. Uh, bow your heads. <laughs> close your eyes in this holy moment where the Holy Spirit's at work in all of our lives. Because we know we've messed up in those areas when we panicked. We were like the children of Israel. We thought God changed his mind. We went back. But right now, Jesus just wants to be in your heart, lead you, lead you to your promise. I'm going to count to three. One, today's a great day to do this. Two, don't talk yourself out or talk your mind back. Three, respond. Raise your hand in this place. Let Jesus lead your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those watching online, is this your day? Is this the day to get right with Jesus, to get right with God, to make him number one, make him your leader, surrender everything so that he's in charge? Then if, if you're like, yes, yes, that's me, then would you repeat this prayer with them? Church, let's all pray it. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus that forgives me. That forgives me where I've fallen short. Where I've fallen of short your best. Of your best. I ask today. I've asked today that you would be. That you would be not only savior. Not only savior, but Lord. But Lord, leader. Leader, completely in charge. Completely in charge. I thank you. I thank you for your forgiveness. For your forgiveness. And I thank you. And I Thank the you. old, the old can be passed away. Can be passed away, and all, and all is become new. Has become new in uh, Jesus, name. In Jesus name. Amen. You know, every one of us in this room, I think this message affects all of us, because life is maybe today not what it's supposed to be for you, but maybe today looks amazing, but maybe next week isn't going to look like it was supposed to look. Wherever you're at in this journey, I want you to know, stay calm, set your mind on things above, and let the peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding guard your heart and your mind. And let's lead the enemy right into their demise. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor Greg, I'm right there with you with the Hallmark movies. Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn in my man card for homework movies. So stay calm. That's the word. You know, earlier today, as everything was kind of going haywire, and we we're in the back, and stuff doesn't go right, and I got someone in here, hey, do you know how to put a note up to the, to the band on the confidence mountain? Yeah, let's type it up. It's not showing up up there. It's coming through the live stream. And then it's just like, now what? So everyone's talking to me. I'm behind on the words. So I'm trying to get the words back up. So we're, and you're just like, I'm glad I put my deodorant on this morning because it's <laughs> getting hot back here. But then we got it worked out. And the last song, everything was working fine. And that's how it's supposed to be. And so as we go through all of our trials in life, when we get through it, we look back and we say, that's how it's supposed to be. And God, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, and all this is, is over, 
God have, will have put everything back to how it was supposed to be. And so we can look forward to that because it is going to be a glorious day when we can see how it was supposed to be from the very beginning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this day just to be in your house. And we know that when you are in it, it all will work out together. Father, we just pray, Father, you would just keep us calm in the storm, walk with us, show us, guide us, and lead us. And we thank you for all that you have given us. Thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. God is with us.